A bad situation in Haiti is just getting worse, where more than 1,400 people have been confirmed dead so far following Saturday's earthquake. And as social media has shown, efforts to get food and supplies to survivors have been complicated by heavy downpours from tropical storm Grace, forcing many to seek shelter under tarps at campsites where they've been staying in case aftershocks bring down yet more buildings. Many roads are impassable, and although the U.S. Coast Guard has been airlifting some injured people to medical facilities, the process is slow, as one CNN reporter documented. Back at the airport, first responders desperately look for a way to get this young girl out. She's stoic, but her leg is gravely injured, and she's clearly in pain. This plane is full, another helicopter takes off without her, and so after walking around the tarmac, she's placed in another truck. A painful wait for help goes on. One mayor told a Haitian radio station, every house was destroyed. There's nowhere to live. We need shelters, medical help, and especially water. We've had nothing for three days, and injured victims are starting to die. Joining me are Linda Dosina Forish, the former legislator who was the first state senator of Haitian descent in Massachusetts, Pierre Noel, executive director of the Haiti Development Institute, an initiative of the Boston Foundation. Pierre and Linda, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jim, for having us. Pierre, can you bring us up to date on the most current information you have from Haiti? What kinds of conditions are now being experienced? Well, the current conditions, uh, just earlier around one o'clock, I spoke with a couple of partners we have on the ground in the south. And what they're really explaining is uh, people simply do not have any homes left. Uh, those homes that are standing, uh, they're too afraid. And as you can imagine, to actually go back in, in them. Uh, so they spent the night pretty much uh, outside. Uh, there's not enough because uh, we're talking about con co communities that had been disconnected yeah. uh, from the central, uh, from the from port of prince So there's not enough tops and other things uh, available right now for people. So uh, they pretty much spent the night and also the condition got worse uh, yesterday and overnight because of the rain. The flood. Uh, yeah. uh, the hurricane that's uh, making its way there. So uh, they're looking at a couple more days mm -hmm. in the in the room in these bare conditions right now. You know, Linda, one of the things I learned, I mean, mm -hmm. I've been watching all the videos, trying to consume as many reports as I can. Much of what we know, we all know, but I've learned that much of the food for Haiti is produced in this region of the country most affected. So the potential for food shortages well beyond the area where the earthquake was throughout Haiti is quite great, correct? I mean, it is quite great. And I would say that, you know, this is a compounding issue, right, in terms of this horrific earthquake. But there's been in food insecurity for a while, yeah. right, for the at least for the last several months in Haiti. And to have this, you know, tragedy happen is, is very, it's horrible. And I think, you know, want to thank... Um, you know, Pierre, you know, for the work that is happening on the ground. But, you know, this is really uh, a piece that I would say is kind of different, you know, from 2010 is that it hit uh, the capital, which was densely populated, but still, you know, in the south of Lakai and Germany, these areas, you know, it is still populated, right? It's like a small city. Um, and so that is still... Um, horrible, especially in the terms of lack of, of accessibility, you know, coming from yeah. Port-au-Prince to get the goods and the help and the services needed, it's, it's difficult. You know, also on that note, when I read the story about one of the gangs that controls much of the route between Port-au-Prince and this area, granting a cease fire mm -hmm. so that uh, supplies can get there, you say, oh my God. You know, very quickly, I should have asked, starting with you, Linda, do you have family in the affected area or, or no? I mean, I do, I do not, but we still have family in Haiti, but they yeah. were not in that area. How about you, Pierre? No, my family is also in the north. Okay. Uh, Can we talk about short-term needs, starting with you, Pierre? Are, are donate, donations coming in for what is needed? Is U.S. AID doing its job? What's the state of affairs? Well, short-term needs, uh, specifically, there are uh, donations, there are uh, movements uh, in terms of trying to get things to the ground to people. Uh, water, uh, there's a shortage of water, as you can imagine, in cases like this. Uh, and 
right now the need is mostly around care for the sick, the injured, uh -huh. because uh, you will notice the difference between this time and 2010 is where the, the earthquake really covered much of a rural community. Yes. Uh, the rural, rural area, so between the major cities of Jeremy and also uh, Lekai, beside that, you have rural communities that are decimated. Uh, so water is key. Uh, people need uh, temporary housing. Those are, the, those are the things that are necessary right now. Temporary housing, water, food, because people also mm -hmm. have, uh, do not have access to certain things uh, because uh, of the disconnect that existed for three months and uh, exacerbated uh, by this earthquake. And on top of that, of course, you're looking at uh, the, the, the COVID uh, effects in the hospital. Of course. Uh, you know, well, because the hospitals were already at capacity uh, prior to this. Linda, but then, then, I'm uh, sorry, go ahead, Pierre, I'm sorry. One thing that we also, I, I should add also, is that you also, this right from 2010, is that thanks to people like the senator who helped put together the Haiti Development Institute, uh, we actually have quite a ton of access and support and partners in the South, capable organizations, capable leaders who right now can actually accompany their communities. And we actually think that this is gonna be the difference because if included, they would actually be the difference makers. You know, Linda, can we talk longer term for a second? Uh, you know a little bit about construction these days and to borrow a term from the president of this country about building back better, it seems to me that that has gotta be one of the goals for long term stability and public health in Haiti. Is that happening or is that just pipe dream stuff? No, I mean, I think it is happening, right? I would say that in some places they did, they did build back better, right, Pierre, in terms of Haiti. But we know that after this earthquake, though, is how do we bring all the partners to the table? Mm. And this is obviously Haiti and the Haitian government, USAID, you know, the civil society and these institutions and nonprofits, you know, to make sure that they are building standards, right? That we're making sure that the materials used can withstand sure. earthquakes because Haiti is on a fault line. There was an earthquake in 2010, 2021, and there was one in between at 5.6. Yeah. And so this will continue to happen. So how do we build back stronger and better so we can make sure that no lives are lost. You know, and I think it's going to be important. You know, Linda, staying with you for a second, we've talked about the physical infrastructure needs for lack of a better expression. You know, when you see these pictures as somebody who's not been to Haiti and you talk about the three earthquakes and 200,000 people dying in the first one, the recovery that was not yet over, COVID, as Pierre mentioned, the assassination in his home of a president, yet another earthquake. How do the people of Haiti in their heads, not just in their bodies, in their structures, how do they survive this endless series of traumas? Yeah, I would say, you know, and we all know this, um, Haiti and the Haitian people are resilient, right? Because in face of all of these traumas, you know, people are still trying to live their lives, provide for their mm -hmm. families, you know, have food on their table. And so for us, it's how do we support Haiti in self-governance itself, right, as a sovereign country, lifting up Haitian-led organizations, like Pierre said, that are on the ground, you know, where we are helping you know, it needs support from us as America, but not instruction from us because we are not on the ground living there day to day. And so the solution to Haiti are in Haiti. And that is why, you know, I just want to lift up a national organization, you know, that Marie and St. Fleur and I um, was part of the founders called the National Haitian American Elected Officials yeah. Network. It's made up of current and former electeds, 200 of us, you know, where we've been having conversations and meeting with our government, USAID, um, the Haitian government and civil society to figure out, you know, what is it that we're going to be doing? Now, this was before the earthquake because Understood. of the whole political unrest. And so obviously everyone had to pivot and focus to see how we're going to make sure that when when we're saving people's lives, yes, but that we're making sure that when Haitians come out of this, you know, that there's opportunity Understood. and, you know. 
You know, Pierre, I only have 15 seconds left. If individuals want to do what they can to help, what's the best advice you can give them quickly if you can? Well, right now, there's the, there's the best way to do this is to make sure that you provide, you can uh, find, get support down uh, to the people, but to uh, people that has access to uh, the context and the cultural competent to do this. Mm -hmm. And right now, the Haiti Development Institute has created uh, an earthquake fund to raise funds that would be going to support not only the relief effort, but also to, uh, to support organizations that are in the trenches with woods and stake on the ground to help them accompany their communities through this crisis. That's wonderful, Pierre. I also wanted to just add quickly and, and just mention, you know, the work that's happening in Massachusetts with our private public partnerships, yes. right? Like Governor Baker has been on the phone, um, Partners in Health, Build Health International, um, with Jim and Karen and Sarah, right, Pierre, that we work closely with. But I want to say that, you know, we're also working with Robert Kraft, who has so generously mm -hmm. um, donated his plane to bring down medical supplies and personnel down sure. to Haiti um, to be sure that there's you know, connection, right? And so many people are doing amazing things and we want to be able to lift up the work that Pierre is doing as well and other organizations. So please research. We need you all to support and keep the prayers going for Haiti. Uh, Linda, Pierre, I really appreciate your time. Best of luck with your work and best of luck to the people in Haiti. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Jim.